Once a month, Paula Pant, host of the Afford Anything podcast, answers voicemail questions the listeners send in. Here's one now. Hey, Paula. My name is Dan. I'm a Dutch citizen currently working in Malaysia. So I was wondering how some of your teachings apply to people, to international people, and especially one like me who travels every two to three years, I'll change to a different country within the same industry just because that's my way of slow travel and I'd love to see different places. So that makes my real estate question a little bit more tricky because currently I'm investing in index funds and I'm wondering if there's any way that you could see real estate being a viable option. I'd like to have some passive income and I am, of course, able to look for a rental property where I'm staying at that point. But within two to three years, I'm going to leave and I'm not necessarily going to be able to stay much in that environment. Currently, I'm in, in Asia and there's a lot of uncertainty and not a lot of figures and details uh, that you can find about the different areas. So I was wondering if you have any tips for that, or maybe if you know people that have podcasts or information that you think might be very relevant to somebody who travels for a living, is not from the US and is not necessarily staying in one place at a time. Thank you so much for your amazing job at the podcast. And Steve, thank you so much for editing. Bye-bye. That's a great question. Now, first of all, I'm going to give the disclaimer that my area of knowledge is uh, real estate investing in the United States. That's you know kind of what I specialize in. It's what I do. So uh, I'm not familiar with investing in uh, in Europe or in Canada or in Australia or in any other markets outside of the U.S. That being said, and of course, my answer is going to naturally reflect my my bias towards U.S. investing. That being said, you could always invest in real estate in the U.S. You could always buy rental properties in the United States. And in fact, there are a lot of international investors who own properties here in the U.S. There was uh, a guy, I featured an interview with him in the course, the real estate course that I'm building, uh, a guy by the name of Rich Carey. He is a U.S. citizen, but he's in the military and he is lives abroad. At the time that I interviewed him, he was living in Germany. I think he's moving to South Korea. He either is moving or just recently moved to South Korea. So he's lived outside of the U.S. for uh, many, many years. And he owns uh, a number of rental properties, somewhere around ballpark, I think, like 17, 16, 17, something like that, of rental properties, all centralized in Montgomery, Alabama. And he's got his team there. He's got a property manager. He's got a real estate agent. He's got contractors. He's got his whole team centralized there. And so, um, you know, he lives in Germany slash South Korea, and his team is running his business in Alabama. Think of it very much as any example of a person who runs a business that is headquartered outside of where they live. Uh, that's essentially what you're you're doing uh, when you are an out-of-state or out-of-country rental property investor. Now, the reason that I'm telling that story is to illustrate that not only is it possible, it's actually more common than you think. There are many people who live outside of the U.S. who invest in rental properties in the U.S. That being said, however, I will give a couple of caveats. Number one, obviously all of the money that you would be dealing with is U.S. dollars. You know, you'd be buying in U.S. dollars, you'd be spending in U.S. dollars, and if you don't plan on ever living in the U.S., not even in retirement, you will eventually be converting those U.S. dollars into whatever currency you plan on spending that money in. So you do have an additional level of risk there in terms of currency fluctuation. Number two, in terms of uh, qualifying for financing, that can get a little bit more complicated when you are an out-of-country investor. So that's just something to bear in mind. Your first couple of properties – Access to capital, like money, is going to be more expensive and harder to find. That's not to say it can't be done. It's just, again, the cost of doing business. Number three, as is common for many out-of-state or, or just long-distance investors, it is helpful to centralize your activities in one geographic area, you know, one particular city in one particular state, like Dayton, Ohio, or Indianapolis, Indiana, or Montgomery, Alabama, 
because that way you build one team. You've got one property manager. You've got one real estate agent. You've got one electrician. You've got one plumber. When I moved to Vegas, a lot of people were like, oh, are you going to start investing in properties there? And I'm like, dude, I already have my team like nailed in Atlanta, Georgia. So if I were to start investing in properties elsewhere, I would have to completely reinvent the wheel. I'd have to build a new team. I'd have to start a new business. That's not to say that I'm not going to do it, but it is to say that the the flippant question, like every time I move somewhere, I'm not just going to start investing in properties because I happen to live there. Because, you know, people ask, people were asking me that question very casually, very flippantly. And, um, it kind of struck me, my impression was that they weren't really thinking through the ramifications of, well, if you bought a property in this location, that means that you would need to build a team in this location. So so that's the other thing that I would say is if you are going to decide to become a long distance investor, pick one spot and then really focus your energy on creating that team within that spot. You'll have to fly there from time to time. You'll have to visit, particularly as you're learning the area as you're setting things up. So again, that's just part of doing business. Uh, I'll take it back to the analogy of imagine if you were starting a, a company that, let's say that you live in California and you want to start a company that deals with goods that are made in Bali, Indonesia. You would have a leg of your company that's headquartered in Bali and you would have to occasionally, even though you live in California, you would have to occasionally fly to Bali in order to establish your company, to build your team, to meet with your suppliers. Um, you know That's what you do when you live somewhere and you build a business somewhere else. And real estate in that regard is no different. So that is, again, my, my very long answer to your question is that if you want to, if it interests you, you are absolutely able to buy rental properties in the U.S. And functionally, what you would be doing if you did that is you would be starting a business in the United States. And that business would be in the business of purchasing houses and then renting them out in one-year increments to people who wanted to live there. That's what your business does. And the team that you hire runs that business. And so that option is totally available to you. Hey, did you enjoy this excerpt from the Afford Anything podcast? Then click to download our free ebook, Escape. You'll be taken to a page where you can enter your email for immediate access to everything you need to know about escaping the nine to five grind to live life on your terms. And you can also subscribe with one simple click to get alerted when new videos are uploaded.